Guys, I'm super excited to show you the Nano Presso. I'm still in the honeymoon phase, so forgive me if I sound a little gushy. It's not a sales pitch. There's absolutely no financial incentive for me to try and convince you to buy this product. I just genuinely believe that it's something special. Now, I'm a massive fan of manual coffee machines. I absolutely adore the AeroPress, and I've been using the Staresso and the Handpresso now for the best part of the year, pretty much on a daily basis. And I think the Nano Presso seriously raises the bar. It's the lightest, the smallest, and yet the most powerful portable espresso machine available. And I also think it's got the potential to produce the most consistent coffee, and I'll explain why later. So today I'm gonna to unbox it, I'll show you the individual components and how they go together, and then I'll demonstrate it. And after that, we'll take a closer look at dialing in the grinds and fine tuning the extraction. So it comes in a nice compact but well put together retail box. Now in the box there's the user manual which is really well illustrated and it's got a great instructional guide and it's basically in every single language you could possibly think of so that's really good. There's also a warranty card there and a couple of stickers. Now this case is bang on, it's exactly what I'm looking for. Very compact and it fits in there perfectly. Now let's break this down and show you the individual components. So at the bottom you've got the water tank and inside there there's a scoop and a brush. Now that water tank also has an espresso cup at the bottom which is perfect for going hiking with. Up the top you've got the porter filter and inside there you've got the filter basket and that just drops into a little recess the porter filter screws on really nicely. Build quality is bang on, especially the piston, which is the best I've used so far. Almost silent, fantastic. So you've got the main body, you've got the porter filter, you've got the water tank, the espresso cup, the scoop, the brush, and the filter basket. Now these components all go together so well. The quality of the machining on this product is unbelievable. It feels so robust and yet it's ridiculously light. I couldn't ask for more in a portable espresso machine. I really couldn't. So there's a quick look at the product. So now let's uh, get on to the important thing which is making a great coffee. They're freshly roasted and obviously freshly ground beans that I'll be using in this demonstration. I'll put more information about grinding your coffee beans at the end. So let's just zero this out. And then if I add the coffee, level with the top of the scoop. You see that? Eight grams. So there you go, that's the right amount of coffee there. So if you didn't want to go through all the bother of using the digital scales, you know you're pretty close if you've got the grind right for it to be flush with the top like that. Now the process of getting it into the basket, you could just turn that round like that and flip it. Give it a little tap and there you go. Okay, so what I've done guys is I've just taken my um, scoop and I've tampered that down nice and tight so I've basically got a really nice puck of coffee there ready to go. Okay guys, now this first phase, it's not essential that you do do it, but I always do when I'm using the Star Esso or the Hand Presso, and that is to preheat the device with some boiling water before you start doing your extraction. As I said in the introduction, I'm still in the honeymoon phase, so I haven't fine-tuned my preheating technique yet. Um, it's something that takes time to really get a nice method. So basically, I'm just gonna try and put boiling water through all the major components and um, so it's nice and warm when I start the extraction. Now you want to fill this up no higher than the line. The line's 80 mil but you see that? That's about 50 mil of water.
I was dreaming you was overdosing on coffee. Yesterday I was really working hard to dial in the perfect coolness. I must have had six espressos in the space of a couple of hours. I just couldn't sleep last night. <laughs> the amount of water that you push through is obviously dependent on how strong you like your coffee. Um, I often drink um, an Americano. I'll extract the maximum amount of water, which in this case would be 80 milliliters, and then I'll top it out with hot water if I want a substantial drink. But if I'm drinking an espresso, I don't really go for the 50-50 ratio, which would be a total weight of 16 grams, eight grams for the coffee, eight grams for the water. It's just too small a drink for, for my liking. Sometimes I do a, um, three to one ratio so um, the drink would weigh 24 grams and it would have eight grams worth of coffee so that was a basic demonstration now what i'm going to do is just show you the cleaning process job done just kidding you basically just need to give it a little rinse under the tap in the areas where obviously the coffee passes through but it's minimal it takes a matter of seconds Okay guys, I'm gonna give you a few tips and things to look out for. Number one is the pumping speed. You're supposed to pump once every second. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. If you pump too fast, you can actually take the pressure beyond the 18 bars and that will release the extracted water back into the tank below. So as long as you've got a little bit of water left in the um, tank, once you're done, um, you can just check that water, make sure it's nice and clear. If it's discolored, it means that you're either pressing it too fast or you've tampered it too hard or you've ground the coffee too fine. So that's a, that's a way that you can um, know if those three elements are wrong. Another thing to look out for is when it's coming out the nozzle, make sure nothing's coming out of these three holes around the edge. If it is, the chances are you haven't really prepared your basket cleanly enough, so you might have to address that. So look out for that. Uh, the other thing is the flow rate. If you've if you've tampered too hard or ground the coffee too fine, it will drip out literally like a dripping tap. That means that you have to not be too hard on your tamper or um, maybe just dial back your ceramic mill so it's a little bit coarser. On the other extreme, if when you're squeezing it, it's just gushing and then stopping, gushing and then stopping as you're pressing, the chances are it's too coarse, in which case you need to grind your coffee a bit finer. What you should get, and I'll show you a clip, is almost a continuous flow, a steady stream, and you're looking for it to take about 25 to 30 pumps assuming that you're counting one pump a second that's going to put you in the window of 25 to 30 seconds which is a good amount of time for an extraction if you want the best from this machine find a coffee that you really like and um, this one is roasted locally to me about five miles down the road and if you look at the roasting date it's less than a week old so you can't really go wrong with with that Dial in your grinds, get get the coarseness right. Like I say, there is a decent amount of variation that you can go through, and the difference in the grind does affect the flavour. You can push it more towards a bitter taste or a, a, a sm smoother taste, depending on your preference, really. As for the weight, eight grams, as it says in the instructions. You can get pretty damn close by just leveling off this uh, scoop. Um, I've tested it, sometimes it falls to nine, sometimes it's never read seven, so it's either been eight or nine. If I just scoop that in there and go like that, 
if you didn't want to go to the hassle of weighing it every time, which probably I won't bother doing eventually. I'm still in the early phases with the product. Tampering it, it says to hard tamper. Now, personally, I like the idea of tampering it moderately to get to that point just before the Porter filter is going to come down and make that final tamp because that way I can guarantee I'm going to get a consistent tamp every time. It's not what the manual says, but that's what I think is going to work for me and it might work for you as well. The important thing is make sure that rim is nice and clean so that you don't have any of your coffee escaping through these three holes on the side. Moving forward, I've got to tell you about these additional accessories that are coming. They're not yet available and I'm hoping that I'll get those accessories and I can do another video and demonstrate them. There's two. One of them is a double shot. So there's a um, larger tank, I believe, and um, obviously a larger filter basket. And that is something that really excites me because I like a double shot. And the other product is an espresso capsule adapter. One sec. So basically you can buy these capsules. Now obviously you're not going to get quite as good a coffee as if you go down the route of you know grinding your own beans. But if you're out on a camping trip and you want the most hassle-free way of making a coffee then there's nothing better than these. So guys I've probably rambled on long enough about this product. You can probably tell I love it and I can't wait to get my hands on the accessories when they're available. There will be a full website review as well so look in the description below and there'll be a link to my website so check that out. So guys I'll leave it there. If you found this useful please leave me a like or a comment below and if you want to subscribe that'd be great too and I'll see you on the next one.